Take up, Lord, thy lifted up, Lord. Come and watch this bursting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up. Watch this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Spirit, truth divine, dawn upon this soul of mine. Word of God and in my night, wake my spirit, clear my sight. Holy Spirit, love divine, glow within this heart of mine. Every high desire perish shall in thy pure fire. Holy Spirit, power divine, fill and nerve this will of mine. Grant that I may strongly live, bravely bear and nobly strive. Holy Spirit, right divine, King within my conscious reign, be my Lord and I shall be firmly bound forever free. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven uh, living in Jerusalem. And at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthenians, Medites, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, 
raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun, the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our psalm today is Psalm 104, verses 24 through 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan whom you form to play in it. These all look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth. Let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Oh 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The book of Genesis tells a story of the invention of the brick. Before this point, buildings and structures were cobbled together with stones of differing shapes and sizes. This didn't lend itself to structural integrity, and those living on the plains couldn't afford to cart stones to their cities. This story illustrates the arrival of a new era in the history of the world, the brick much like some other technologies have done in our own time, transformed how humans live and work and think. But humans became arrogant, and they thought that they could build a structure to take heaven by storm and bring it down to earth on their own terms. So the story goes, God divided humanity with different languages, making their work impossible and scattering the nations of the world. As you probably know, this is the story of the Tower of Babel. When we become too proud, we think we can remake heaven and earth into our own image. And all this leads to is confusion and division, and confusion and division breed violence. Today is the day of Pentecost a commemoration of the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out onto the church. In Greek, Pentecost means 50th, because today is the 50th day of Easter. In our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we find Jesus' disciples gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish festival Shavuot. In English, uh, this is called the Feast of Weeks. On the Jewish calendar, Uh, Shavuot, or Pentecost, takes place 50 days after the beginning of Passover. It marks the end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest. It's a time of thanksgiving and celebration of God's good gifts in creation, and it's a time of transition. For us Christians, it's the 50th day of Easter, and a culmination of God's saving work in the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. When we find the disciples in the second chapter of Acts, they're waiting. They've gathered in the upper room. Less than two months before this, Jesus was unexpectedly arrested, put on trial, and crucified. Even more unexpectedly, he came back from the dead after three days. We're told that he spent 40 days with them and then ascended to heaven. 
And this was a troubling time for the disciples because Jesus was again absent from them. But before these things took place, he made a promise. I'm going away, but I will always be with you. You won't see me anymore, but I will never leave you. Jesus promised another companion or advocate because we always need someone to go with us or to go to bat for us. And so he told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. He promised to send the Spirit as a comforter, guide, and power to unify them. As they waited out those ten days, we can only imagine what kinds of doubts and fears they faced. Acts tells us, And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Luke, who's telling this story, uses dramatic sounds and images. It sounded like a mighty wind. It looked like tongues of fire. He isn't very precise. He tells us about a miracle, but he's less concerned with the details than he is with what it means. Wind and fire. Both of these elements are prophetic images for the presence of God in the world. In Genesis, we're told that at creation, a wind from God, the Spirit of God, blew over the face of the chaotic, watery deep. In the languages of the Bible, Hebrew and Greek, the words for spirit are ruach and pneuma. Each of these words could mean wind, breath, or spirit. The words had multiple meanings because any movement of air was considered a sign of life and a gift from God. In the Bible, to be alive is to have the spirit of God breathed into you. When Israel was enslaved in Egypt, God appeared to Moses in a burning bush and gave him the message of liberation. When they were in the wilderness, God was with them at night in a pillar of fire. And the prophets spoke of spirit, wind, and fire when they proclaimed their messages to the people. So the giving of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of God's promise to be with us to breathe new life into humanity, to bring good news and to empower us to share that good news. Pentecost moves us from the old into the new, transitions us from despair to hope. This is the foundation of a new era, what we call the era of the church. Pentecost is so important to us because it marks the birth of the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the creation of a new community united in Christ, it is the culmination of the gospel. Pentecost is the reminder that God is always with us and will enable us to proclaim the gospel to everyone. By the way, the story of Pentecost gives us a simple model for worship. The disciples gathered in one place. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit and took the gospel out into the world. That is what our worship is aimed at. Each of us is called to gather on the Lord's day. Of course, lately we have gathered virtually, but we have still gathered. We are called to be empowered by God's Spirit through the Word, sacraments, and our fellowship. And we are called to depart in God's peace to testify to the gospel of Jesus with our neighbors. And so the disciples were out on the streets proclaiming the gospel in languages they didn't even know. I've always loved that moment in this story when some of the bystanders thought the disciples were just hammered drunk. What kind of wine could do something like that? 
It's hard enough to understand a drunk person speaking his own language. So Peter steps up and he says, these guys aren't drunk. It's only nine in the morning. And he went on to deliver the first sermon of the church. He used the words of the prophet Joel, who saw a new era coming when God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. It's a promise of new dreams, of new visions for the world. And even though the expressions of these gifts were often restricted to young men in the past, not restricted by God, but by people, the gifts of the Spirit are given to all, regardless of age, gender, or social status. See, Pentecost is the great reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel. Our attempts to take heaven by storm only result in division and ultimately in the human violence that arises from our isolation from one another. At Babel, the nations were scattered. At Pentecost, they were gathered again. At Babel, we were separated by language. At Pentecost, a new unity took shape that now transcends language, location, or any other human division, reconnecting us with God and one another. At Babel, we failed to shape heaven and earth into our own image. At Pentecost, the culmination of Easter, God began to fulfill the promise to reshape the world in a new way. And this promise is fulfilled over and over again, little by little, every day of our lives. Sometimes the presence of the Holy Spirit is experienced in mighty winds and flames like on the day of Pentecost. That's how the American poet T.S. Eliot described his turn toward salvation. In his four quartets, there's a poem called Little Gidding. In this poem, he writes of humanity's choice between the fires of all the little hells we create and the fire of the Holy Spirit. The dove descending breaks the air with flame of incandescent terror, of which the tongues declare the one discharged from sin and error. The only hope or else despair lies in the choice of pyre or pyre to be redeemed from fire by fire. Who then devised the torment? Love. Love is the unfamiliar name behind the hands that wove the intolerable shirt of flame which human power cannot remove. We only live, only suspire, consumed by either fire or fire. But sometimes the spirit moves differently for us. When John Wesley had his Aldersgate experience on May 24th, 1738, he experienced the Holy Spirit with a strangely warmed heart. He wrote in his journal, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins and saved me from the law of sin and death. He began to pray for all those who had wronged him in the past, forgiving them, And then he got up and testified to everyone about what had happened. This experience of the Holy Spirit revolutionized the way that Wesley lived and ministered to others. He said that before this, he had the form of religion without the power. His Aldersgate experience was a watershed for the early Methodist movement, and it gave it its new inspiration. Sometimes the spirit arrives in wind and flame, sometimes in a cool breeze or a warm feeling surging up inside of us, and sometimes we don't necessarily feel anything at all. But God is with us. Christ will never forsake us. And we can see the effects of the spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness and justice to name a few if we look for them 
We might not always recognize God's presence, but we can keep our eyes peeled for the ways that God breaks into our everyday lives. By the gift of the Holy Spirit, humanity has transitioned into a new era where we can all participate in God's good work of resurrection. The Spirit unites the church, moves us, and shapes us for this. The wind of Pentecost is still blowing, the fire is still burning, and God's Spirit is still being poured out. May we always be open to receive this gift. Amen. We will continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's been wonderful keeping in touch with all of you by phone or Facebook or email. I hope that we will remain in touch and that you have kept an eye out on especially the Facebook page for prayer requests throughout the week. Um, if you have prayer requests to share with everyone, uh, post them to our Facebook page or send an email to lincolncommunityumc at gmail.com. And if you have private prayer requests, you can call, text, or email me anytime. Now let us pray for the church and for the world. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for all people, especially those in any kind of need through famine, war, or natural disaster. Make your ways known upon earth, your saving power among all people. Help us to lighten their burden and to seek justice and peace for all. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that all who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in holiness of life. Strengthen your church in the service of Christ that we may be witnesses to your compassion. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or relationship. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bless those who care for them. We commit to your mercy all who have died. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ and one another and love as he loves us. We commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers, we pray, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now together let us pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are all grateful for your continued support of the church and its ministries through this time. If you would like to give electronically, you can do so by visiting www.lincolncommunity-umc.org donate, or you can mail a check to 9074 Whitaker Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan 48197. Let us offer our gifts to God with grateful hearts. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit
it sends us forth to serve, we go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>